On this episode of Big Boys Don't Cry, we discuss the film After Ever Happy. You don't have to have seen the film to enjoy the podcast, but if you do listen without having seen it, just be aware there'll be spoilers. Enjoy. can't be bothered to bleep no one has time for bleeping you should come up with a comedy noise that makes you feel happy when you get to use it like a little duck quack or something oh yeah my son's quite into ducks i spend a lot of my time quacking oh there we go i could, I could go for that you could quack, you, quack, you quack. could go for that oh yes can do <laughs> i could hear a quack could hear a quack um <laughs> or alternatively i saw a very that's cute, good that's I, good <laughs> Thank you. I saw a very cute video today. Did you know that axolotls, they do a little bark when their heads stick out the water? Really? Yeah. I You wouldn't imagine it from a little um, amphibian creature. But yeah, they do a little They're quite creepy bark. little guys, aren't they? Oh, I love an axolotl. There was, um, at school in the science lab, there was a tank with some axolotls in it. Really? That's um, amazing. Yeah. Well, the science teacher kept them and they they always used to freak me out. Because um, my favourite Pokemon is Mudkip, which I heard is... you like Mudkips. <laughs> I, unironically, I do like Mudkips, <laughs> and obviously that's sort of like a mud skippery axolotl thing. It's the cute, yeah. it's the cutest little boy with these weird little frilly things on the side of his face. That's the... you know what my favourite Pokemon is. What's your favourite Pokemon? Arcanine. Arcanine. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. Big fiery dog. Yeah. What what more could you want? A, a nice fiery boy. Yeah, either that or whichever the worst Pokemon in the new game is that everyone hates. That's my new Pokemon. <laughs> I haven't I my haven't been keeping Pokemon. up with the most hated new Pokemon discourse. There are a couple of Pokemon that have gone down very well that people love. There is a pig Pokemon called Lechonk, which everybody loves. <laughs> um, That's fantastic. There's also a ghost dog that everybody absolutely adores, and its final form is so overpowered in the game that it's already been banned from competitive Pokemon. <laughs> so <laughs> um, Fantastic. Yeah, so there, there's a few that, are, that have gone down very well. I haven't been keeping up to date with the discourse because I have i don't want to get too bogged down in that kind of things until I finish the game myself and I've been taking my time with it. Um, so I'll read up And you've on got a lot of other important stuff to watch. I do have an awful lot of important stuff to watch, including this week's film. And yeah, and also the festive season is fast approaching. Oh, so, that's true. So, so that I realised. Well, I have. I, I had. I, I was going to say I have a bone to pick with you, but I think what I have is the reverse of that, which is I'm going to present a bone to you that you can pick with me. If that makes sense. <laughs> sure. Like like a dog bringing sure. you a bone. I'm going to throw you a bone. But um, I the the scheduling of the show has been a um as changed a little bit this year so sometimes i don't always get the edit out the same week it might be a monday even as late as a monday and it should usually be on a friday whatever we aim for weekly on a friday we're still a weekly show i think we're doing really well but Mm -hmm. i had miscalculated usually if it's the if the friday if we're doing a themed month if the first friday of the month falls on you know it's like the first or the second we'll count that as the first friday and i didn't realize that this friday is december so yes. in my, yeah. my haste to, to torture you by making you watch another film with Hero Finds <laughs> Tiffin in it, I've I've actually taken away a week of festive film from us. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Obviously, I'm quite unhappy that I have to watch this particular movie. But you know what? It's fine. And well, we, we could have been watching something something festive. We could be watching something. Do, do you have an idea a Christmas about... Christmas Prince 4. Uh, do you have an idea about what the first festive movie is going to be? Or um, do you want? Or do you, oh, yeah, let's decide it now so that we go into this week's episode with some good vibes. Um, do you want the one with Will Ferrell or the one with Lindsay Lohan? <laughs> I was thinking Lindsay neither Lohan. of which I can remember the title of. <laughs> Falling for Christmas is the Lindsay Lohan one. Is that the one? Okay, yeah, that's the one where she loses her memory and then um, once again there's a there's a dead wife. <laughs> 
Lucas. <laughs> Once make... again, there's a dead wife. <laughs> Once again, there's a dead wife. <laughs> yeah, with the ill dead wife. With the ill yeah. behavior. Yeah. Um, well, no. It, <laughs> Lindsay it, it's... Lohan's back with the ill behavior. <laughs> Because because that's what happens in every Christmas movie that's got a romantic angle is there's always a dead wife for the for the man because they couldn't just be divorced or he couldn't just be single in his thirties or forties there's got to be a reason and the reason's always that his wife is dead. <laughs> if you're lucky, there might be a kid involved as well, and there might kid. be a kid involved. So yeah, fooling for Christmas. Let's do that first. All right, sounds good. We yeah. we watched h- half of one on Christmas twenty four the other day that was called Christmas CEO. Oh. Which I don't think we should watch, but it's it's worth noting here. And then we turned on we turned it on the next day, um, and we were like, "Is that the same film?" But it was just the same actor playing exactly the same role in a completely different film. I mean, fair play to him. He's he's got a he's got a type for for his roles that he's sticking to. No, her it was the main lady. The CEO was a lady, oh, the CEO lady, was a lady CEO of a toy company. Oh, um, who was like. So the the deal was she, her toy company was trying to merge with like a massive toy company who were trying to buy her out and she's all like hustle CEO boss lady um but to to get the merger approved she needed the signature of her ex business partner who obviously is like her old childhood friend who's loved her all along you can see, see where that goes yeah that's slightly disappointing to be honest i think it should go it down was... the route of robin williams's toys have you ever seen that film I don't know if I have, you know. I, I vaguely know the concept off the top of my head, well, but I don't oh, think I've ever seen it. Does that happen at Christmas? If that happens at Christmas, we're watching it. I'm sorry, but... I am i don't know. I'm very, very sad that he is dead. It's been many, many years, but his death is one of the ones that still makes me very sad. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, truly, truly brilliant. Um have you yeah have you ever have, so do you know what toys is about no so it's about um buzz it's, lightyear and woody woody aldrin <laughs> <laughs> it's it's about um yeah that's exactly what it is it's 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 um toy story no um he takes over his or or the 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 ceo of this toy company hands over ownership of the company to one of his sons and it's almost like a weird fantasy comedy thing with like a military angle because the person who takes over starts turning the toys into like military toys (laughs) or like or like military weapons to be used it's really really weird and it's got like robots in it um it is when was it made it was made in like 90 i'm gonna say 92 93 Wow. It's super strange. I remember we had it on video and it's probably slightly too complicated for the age that I was watching it at, much like with everything that I watched when I was a kid. But yeah, um, but yeah I've got a, a striking memory of like one of those cute little classic dog toys being shot by a rocket from a little evil robot toy and just <laughs> the, this, this, this sting of really heartbreaking music <laughs> coming in. We should watch it at some point if it's available anywhere, because it is truly one of the strangest films I've ever seen in my life. It sounds um, great. Yeah, it's really, there's nothing quite like it. Directed by Barry Levinson, who did um, Good Morning Vietnam. Oh, um, right. Rain Good Morning Man. Vietnam is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, really weird film. Fully worth watching. Unlike... Have we talked about Good Morning Vietnam? I don't think we have. I'm just putting yeah. it off, putting off talking about this week's film, obviously, as we always have to, but... <laughs> <laughs> particularly this week i don't think we have them good morning vietnam but we should do we should <laughs> so anyway christmas ceo was a cookie cutter christmas 24 terrible film but it was a lot better than this week's film this is possibly the worst movie we've ever watched on this podcast i'm gonna say it now yeah is this worse than the one before absolutely worse than the one before which was after we fell i genuinely like can't even remember what happened in that film <laughs> i uh, Apart from, I don't one... even remember watching it. Apart from the, the well, this film had a hel- uh, a helpful recap at the beginning, so you could get what was going on. <laughs> but it wasn't that, that helpful. It, let's like... be honest. No, it, it was it pretty bare really bones, help. wasn't it? Um, so we, it was after was the first one, wasn't it? Then it was after we collided. Yeah. Then it. Was that was the good we... one. 
after we collided was well i say i use the word good loosely. the least bad one <laughs> that was the least bad one that yeah. had them cole sprues in it being like the cheeky office romance guy yeah and yeah, i kind of loved right. him in that and was like what are you you are so much better than this you don't and deserve this that's the one where she has a car crash at the end and then harden our our main serial abuser um is like i'm the only one who can help you you can believe in me and then after we fell was where um the dad comes back into her life and then he owes money to some people and harding gives him a watch do you remember that yeah yeah after yeah. fighting him in a bar for no reason <laughs> that's right he's a fighting boy um <laughs> they showed that in the recap yeah yeah um that's what happened in the last one whereas in this one nothing happens this is like part one of harry potter and the deathly hallows or <laughs> the one before the end of twilight or the one before the end breaking of, dawn part one yeah or the one before the end of um hunger games where Isn't this is breaking dawn part one the one where they have sex and he breaks the bed and then the creepy baby's born <laughs> that's or completely was that the last right one? yeah that is part one yeah, it's been a which, long time since we watched those. Which, to be fair, it does have the creepy baby and the bed-breaking scene. And I think that might be the one where they introduce uh, throwing a baby into a fire. Or was that the one before? Maybe it was. Maybe that was the one before. It all blends into one tapestry of wolves running and then Michael Sheen laughing maniacally. <laughs> exactly. But one thing you'll notice about all of those teen um, book-to-film series is that all of them had some kind of epic storyline going on, whereas this movie, which um, is part of a, a five-book series, isn't it? Um, Unfortunately so. I thought this was the last one, but it's not. There's one more <laughs> There's going to be another one. one. Um, this one, this series, isn't a fantasy epic or a dystopian epic or a horror romance epic. This is just one horrible human being and the person that he's constantly inflicting pain on. And so it's already boring, it's already horrible, and now all this penultimate movie is is the build-up to the finale of that horrible story. If you want to see what the exact opposite of a fantasy epic is, it's this. (laughs) exactly right this is like i said this is the worst movie we've watched i'm gonna say it now um the our main i, I think have to so. go through some of our worstest hits to work that out i mean the, the the previous one that was the worst i think was just, oh, just friends. friends but even that had ryan reynolds being hit in the dick by a hockey puck yeah that was kind of good from that point of view i mean this is this is a nothing burger isn't it as the yeah, kids say literally nothing happens in this film and like one of the reasons that we hated just friends was that it's it's messaging was awful and the after movies have always had terrible messaging about romance about respect within relationships but this is by far the worst of the lot when it comes to that kind of thing in terms of teaching people how to respect one another in a relationship or what's acceptable of an abusive partner in a relationship this is by far the worst one with this messaging it's truly awful yeah um is this worse than the animal or the hot chick yeah, oh, looking back at the schneid loon episodes <laughs> this is worse than any rob schneider movie that we've watched on this podcast and that is saying a lot I, I don't keep the scores anymore. Some nerd who listens to the show needs to compile the score. <laughs> yeah, of come on. One show. of our listeners, yeah. please. Um, but yeah, like, also, all of those Rob Schneider movies had a better central performance than our main male lead in this film. Oh, he's just awful. Hero it's finds painful different. to watch. And this is the kind of movie where he should be able to be a strong performer because his character is a nepotism baby which is exactly yeah. what he is. <laughs> and he still can't do it. And I'm not going to say that he there's nothing that fits him because I don't... I mean, the, the most popular things he's been in have been these movies. Maybe there is a, a niche for him somewhere. But he is underperformed in every single one of these films and is particularly irritating in this one. He he, he plays the character hard in Vance, Vance Refrigeration. <laughs> yeah, because um, he finds out that his dad is is Mr. Vance. Yes. He thought his dad was Mr. Scott, who was um, Sandy Cohen from the OC in the first one, and then was some other guy he'd never heard of in the others. (laughs) Yep. Um, uh, He is an angry, selfish jerk, 
angry, abusive jerk born with a foot in his mouth alongside the silver spoon is essentially his character. It starts as it means to go on with him being an arsehole. And that's his default character throughout this movie. This is meant to be your romantic interest. This is meant to be a romantic film. I mean, it's over 90 minutes long and you could get the same Mm. effect of this film by watching a 10 minute compilation of Hero Finds Tiffin saying fuck on YouTube just over and over. (laughs) It would give you the same effect. There's there's also two scenes where he leaves the room and shouts emotionally, incoherently, where it's not a swear word. He's just going, ah! Yeah, Yeah. he's doing his his very best hero finds (laughs) Taffin. Maybe you shouldn't be romancing me! Um... (laughs) Yeah, there are a couple of times where yeah, I think it's the second time where I can't even remember what he was screaming about. Where he just he just went. It's because he found out that his girlfriend was going to have autonomy and go off and do something that she wanted to do without him. Oh, that's right. Was it when she said she was moving to New York? Yeah. So then he went to go and punch someone, a punch his supposed friend and her best friend. Um, and his then, oldest friend who he's known since he, he's a child yeah and then he left through the patio doors and went and shouted in the garden like yeah. a regular human being does <laughs> when like he's he's incredibly rich and doesn't seem to have a job or anything or anything tying him down if he he could just move to new york if he wants to <laughs> like that's uh, what it, that and that perfectly encapsulates what is just so utterly fake about all of these films, and like all oh, the story just doesn't work on any level because under underlying all of that stuff, it's just fake, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's. <laughs> can I just point out? I wrote all of my notes chronologically. Um, there is a line in this film which is delivered dramatically, which is "Don't quote Hemingway at me." I wrote that down as well. <laughs> And, I can't and then rem- they reference it again later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so this movie starts with him going to his dad's old house where he was traumatised by his dad ripping up a book or something. When he was oh, where, um, no, Vance gave him a copy of The Great Gatsby and then his dad, who was just like there on the sofa, obviously supposed to be like a violent alcoholic. And it's it's actually kind of a brutal scene, but because this film is so fake and so bad at storytelling, it ends up sort of having the opposite effect. But like, yeah, he, he's he got a copy of The Great Gatsby and his dad goes, who gave this to you? And he says, Vance did. And then his dad hits him and the book falls <laughs> falls dramatically to he the goes, floor. I fucking hate books. <laughs> no books yeah. in my house. Books are for nerds. Um, yeah. And it's... It's like, no one would be that upset about The Great Gatsby. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> um, and, and, and the thing that really... Um, the thing that's really frustrating about this film, and that's been frustrating about all these films, is that everything is a facade. Everything's a cliche. Nothing feels real. So, of course, the abusive childhood is the most default abusive childhood. You know, and, and, and someone who's not had the easiest childhood myself, I find it really frustrating when it's just these there's no nuance there there's no reality there it's just giving people the tropes that they expect and in fact that undermines things like safeguarding because if you're if you're doing safeguarding for children for instance or for vulnerable people if all you think of as abuse as being what you see in films like this actually you're going to miss telltale warning signs of actual cases of abuse but you know what i mean like genuinely that's really dangerous messaging for people to 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 show when it's something this lazy is actually people need to be aware of more than just someone shouting at their kid and hitting them and and ripping up their book because actually there's kinds of coercive behavior and dangerous behavior and physical abuse that isn't as obvious as that that people need to be aware of yeah of course it's a very complex issue and if you if you're not going to handle it in a sensitive way and a nuanced way then you shouldn't do it at all should you and here it is used only as a plot device right isn't it to to make him the character the guy the like mysterious brooding guy that we're all supposed to love it's only in service of his character which is a problem we talk about a lot and where Mm. a lot of these films Mm. falls down is is like using something like that purely for characterization and not to actually try and make a nuanced depiction of something that might have some meaning absolutely it's a movie completely devoid of empathy 
the the only reason that exists is to showcase a traumatic childhood because obviously if someone goes through a traumatic childhood it means they're going to be a massive dickhead when they're an adult that's how it always but it works. also means that it's okay for them to be a massive dickhead and to be awful to everyone around them and to, uh, that it will make it makes them a mysterious brooding guy who you love yeah, and it's yeah. okay to love and it's absolutely okay to do that. So then what he does is he sets fire to the building, then Vance Refrigeration turns up and says, don't worry, I'll cover for you, my beautiful son, who just set fire to a house. With no consideration about whether <laughs> yeah. there's neighbours in who might burn to death because he set fire to a house. He runs off to his stupid little posh car, and then he drives away, and then he has sex with his girlfriend. Because <laughs> nothing gets the blood going, like driving through the night after setting fire to a house and then listening to your awful boyfriend whine about their life in a car. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, but, and also, having sex in a car makes it okay that he did arson. It's fine that that's he did how, arson. That's how it works. It's fine that yeah. he could have potentially accidentally killed somebody. You know, it's absolutely fine. Because everyone knows that in London, which is where I think the, 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 the movie starts, it's in London, isn't it? Um, yes. Everyone knows that in London, there's loads of space between houses and loads of space between flats. So Did you not know it was fine. London when they showed a generic shot of the Millennium Dome? <laughs> I think there should that the final movie should just be a 90-minute conversation of them doing that walk up the side of the Millennium Dome thing and him just yeah. worrying about how hard his life is. <laughs> um, yeah. So so then I'm after... riding on that cable car that no one goes on that goes from the Millennium Dome to the other side of the river that Boris Johnson built for lots of money. Yeah exactly exactly um so so basically after that he's then a dick to his girlfriend some more um and after and, and that's really where the movie starts isn't it this is almost like an introduction you're thinking oh he's going on a proper like falling down s crime spree in this movie is he? he's going to set fire to this house he's going to punch someone's dog he's gonna he's gonna yeah. piss in the five guys milkshakes what's he gonna he's do gonna next? kick a cat but instead I, what I kind of wanted it to go down that route i kind of wanted him to become an actual criminal but it always just stops short of that, doesn't it? And, and actually, it's too timid. Imagine, if you will... Sorry, that sounded a bit like Ben Shapiro, didn't it? <laughs> imagine, hypothetically... <laughs> um, <laughs> a, 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 imagine, if you will, that um, this is all a game and the first three movies are just setting up that we're now watching this spiral of this truly awful person that we they built up people to believe in and now he's becoming a bigger and bigger monster for the next two movies how cool would that have been it's instead, when i now that i think about it it's not dissimilar to like a marvel villain origin story arc is it is it <laughs> this is dr doom this is dr doom yeah. story arc um <laughs> but but instead what happens next is it goes what would his, his villain name be the tiffin <laughs> he's like a like one of those chocolate bars with nuts in that's a tiffin and yeah. he's just like a giant one of those that eats you or bakes you into submission yeah. that's exactly what he is um so um but then what happens is after this relatively exciting i mean it's not very exciting because all he does is like light a bit of paper and throw it on the floor it's not particularly yeah it's, it's not particularly, after he's poured some booze around it's it's the most boring arson you're ever gonna see in a movie um, and he's also the most boring ass you'll ever see in a movie. <laughs> also true. Too easy. Too um, easy. <laughs> but then it, it almost goes into feeling like it's a movie written by an algorithm because it just goes back to repeating the same bullshit character plot points that we've seen in the rest of these stupid films over and over again. So he gets all angry. He gets all drunk because if you didn't know, he's got a drinking problem, which again yeah. is only showcased in the most... Um, surface level way with no nuance for what alcoholism is actually like yeah. um it appears then, whenever the plot needs it to move things on and to create a to create conflict between them out of nothing yeah so so basically what he does is he's like i'm fuck off girlfriend that i supposedly love i'm gonna go and get drunk with my friend and then shag some women um I'm then, doing, I'm, but i'm doing it this time with the east london hipsters so i'm it's doing different. it yeah exactly it's different from every other time i've done this over the course of these movies which in the first film wasn't it just that they were at university together and then he was a dick that was that yeah. was the first film. and he said <laughs> i don't date i don't date i'm i'm hero finds tiffin and i don't date um, no, but he had a union jack up but, on his wall oh yes he did didn't he? he had the union jack and he played guitar he doesn't seem to play guitar anymore does he no he doesn't he still he's he's too the... busy being a writer, even though we never see him writing. We can get onto that, obviously. We'll get onto that when we reach that point. 
Um, but basically what happens is she turns up at this party that he's at trying to find him and check he's all right. And instead he's there getting drunk and, and is all over with this other woman. Uh, she then quite rightly is like, okay, well, fuck you then. <laughs> Which then leads him to once again go into his abusive, controlling behaviour, tries to stop her from leaving, punches some stuff, smashes some stuff. He does a nice generic sad pop scream. music. Yeah, there's like a sad appears. Oh, he's an abusive dick. And then you've got some like little sad <laughs> piano in the background. He's crying on the sofa. It's all in slow motion now. Isn't it sad? Um, Look at his sad face. Look at his sad, stupid, posh face. Um, (laughs) Now I'm going to have to remix that over the top of an Adele track. Thanks for giving me more work. (laughs) When the man falls on the sofa... There's some, there's some, yeah, there's some sad slow motion. He punches some stuff. Um, the notes I've got written down for this point is I genuinely hate him and want him to die. I'm not sure if I'm talking about the actor or the character there, to be perfectly honest. Um, They're both guilty of the crime of having made this. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and what happens in the middle point of this film, and I don't know if you noticed this as well, is that it basically descends into flashback scenes for like a solid at least 20 minutes of the runtime of this movie, I swear to God. Yeah. So Where were it's... they cobbling that together from stuff from the previous films? Or I was don't... it shots I of kind of new stuff? I don't remember. Because I can't remember the previous films enough that I'd like, I'm not sure. Because all of the flashbacks were like them standing in a kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't anything particularly dramatic. They um, the ghost I... thing. I like to assume, given how lazy the rest of this movie is, that it is actually just montages from scenes from the previous films. And eventually we're going to reach, like, event horizon point with the after movies, where all it's going to be is just a montage of scenes from the previous movies, and then the odd bit of him shouting in slow motion. Yeah, a clip show. It's going to be half clip show, half a Panos Cosmatos movie, like (laughs) Mandy. Of just slow yeah. motion shouting. <laughs> that's 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 the eventual end point of, of the after films. Yeah, well, he, he descends into madness, finally, as he's supposed to do. <laughs> Which is exactly what's meant to happen. Um, so he becomes the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm Hero Finds Tiffin, and now I am the Joker. We live in a um, society. We, <laughs> a society. I've still not seen it. It's genuinely... <laughs> actually quite a good film um i know a a lot of people were very worried about it being like oh it's going to be like an incel manifesto movie actually it's it's not it's a big old anti-capitalist rant about how people are treated and and there's there's some issues with it and it does feel a little bit like baby's first taxi driver but um it's actually pretty good it's far more interesting not taxi's first baby driver (laughs) that was edgar wright's best film (laughs) um we should talk about the most recent edgar wright movie at some point because what's that um uh last night in soho oh yes lots of people like and i'm not one of them (laughs) i got very bored by it um but we should talk about it at some point because there's some interesting stuff in there Um, i've heard it's somewhat self-indulgent yes (laughs) That's a very polite way of putting it. It does actually have a parallel with the after movies in that it has zero understanding of how higher education works in the modern day, which is quite interesting. All right, yeah, because like, I thought they graduated in the first film or something, but no, they're apparently all still in college, <laughs> and then they graduate. And it's like, yeah. what? How are you people in college? You've not been in college this whole film. They've been like doing jobs and committing arson and fighting people in bars. <laughs> yeah. Like, how many years has this been going on? Um, but, but but basically what happens after this point is that she doesn't want to be with him. And then lots of the other characters in this movie are kind of giving in to him saying, come on, I'm the only one who knows what's good for her and what's right for her. And everyone is facilitating this hugely abusive, like emotionally manipulative relationship. Yeah. Which is exactly what like people who are emotionally manipulative like that do, isn't it? Yeah. And, <laughs> and it, they're all just like, yeah, it's fine. This film is like, yeah, totally it, normal. It, it's the one thing that this movie gets that feels realistic. And it's not meaning to be realistic. It's meaning to be romantic. Is This is a hugely manipulative individual who is abusing his partner, coercing her into doing things and getting heavily engaged in her life for no reason whatsoever, um, apart from for his own self-indulgence. 
Now, there is a turning point, which is the dad that they brought back in the last movie is killed off, meaning that he had no point in this plot whatsoever. He's died. So he's literally in one scene where his his thing is, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. He's died of an overdose. He's dead now. Because he does drugs, and drugs is bad, and then you die. That, yeah. That's the, that's, that's the core of this movie. There's drugs no are bad, and then you die, and then everyone is sad. The only redemption allowed in this movie series is for the worst human being in the world. Yeah, that that's the point of these movies. Anyone else who's done anything wrong ever, no, you're going to die. No, you're going to be have your house set on fire. No redemption. Everyone's just a cartoon character of villainy, apart from our sweet little boy, Hard Hardin Tynes Fiffin, <laughs> which is now his official <laughs> character name, um, who uh, who is a, a sweet little baby who can do no wrong. It's all it's all because he's had a sad life. That's why he's such a horrible, horrible human being. Yeah, but everyone else's sad life doesn't matter. No, no. Like just, Tessa just had the, yeah this difficult childhood as well, and it's only ever used to like make her sad so that he can fix it, whilst also still being a dick at the same time. Yeah, I can fix you. I'm the only one who can fix you. Get in my car. I can conveniently you pay away. for your dad's funeral. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's 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 literally just him flexing the power that he has over her. What happens next is that she goes off to New York. He shouts like a little baby, as we talked about previously. Has a big scream. Oh, yeah, when he finds out that she's moving to New York. Tries to beat up someone. Um, And then what he does... Tries to beat up his best friend. His best friend, one of her her core friends, tries to beat them up and and then disappears for a bit. What happens next is she moves to New York, seems to be happy... Seems to be establishing herself as an individual, gaining that independence. And then he starts... Working in a bar and living in a very nice, expensive apartment, as, oh, as yeah, you do as in New York. That's that's how New York works, is everyone yeah. lives on their own in a fancy apartment when they when they work in a bar. That, that, it's very that's... cheap to live there. It's very easy to get by. <laughs> I mean, that's that's yeah. what I hear about New York. Everyone I know who's ever lived in New York has said, oh, you know what's great about New York? It's not the culture. It's not the, the excitement. It's not, not everything like that. No, it's that it's really cheap to live in. Yeah. Um but, but what what our main boy um Tynes Fiffin does is he he um decides to stalk his ex-girlfriend by moving there for a while and starts following her about like the most romantic thing you could ever do for an individual who no longer wants to have you as part of their life. Um what happens is that eventually she then gives in because of course she does because this is our love struck duo. Um, he starts hanging out with her again. He threatens to beat up a homeless man. Then they get back together, sort of. So clearly, our female lead character has zero agency. Tessa, um, zero interactions outside of um, and zero sort of wants and needs outside of wanting to be loved and wanting to to get a bit of that tiff in, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, yum yum. <laughs> Um, takes him back because oh, the last two things I saw from this guy was him threatening to beat up one of my friends, storming out into the garden, having a scream, and now threatening to beat up a homeless man. And that's after she said, "We need time apart." Yes, in an extremely yeah. fake way that you knew was not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just like that's the thing: the film pretends like it's creating jeopardy, and then it's not. It just it, everything about it is so fake, isn't it? It's it's a comp- it's it's phony. It's like that cheese that you buy for putting burgers. Oh, where on the packet it just says cheese instead Pro- of cheddar, <laughs> yeah, mature cheese, processed milk slices. That's. I oh, mean cheese singles. Cheese singles, yeah. I'm a fan of the cheese single on a burger. I'm a fan I'm of cheese single it. on the burger, but it's not the same as a a block of Stilton, is it? But not on a nothing burger. Which is what this is. <laughs> is what I'm this just is. very glad that I'm able to actually use that word for something. <laughs> word of the year, 2018 or whenever it was. This is, a, yeah. this is more than a nothing burger. This is a black hole burger that just sucks in everything around it and slowly withers it to a husk. That's what this <laughs> film is. Um, but then we find We're just out, saying you put Stilton on a burger. I've had Stilton on a burger. That's out there. I've what? had it, but I wouldn't choose that every day. That's, that's, no, no, no. That's a it's, bit for a, it's for a special... For a, for a special burger, you get a nice solid beef burger, like a proper one, nice thick one. Yeah, got to be a thick boy. Brioche bun. Then what you do 
is you have a layer of rocket on the bottom. You've got your bacon and you've got your stilton. Or if you're smart about it, tiny bit of mayo, crushed up stilton, and then spread on the top of the bun. And then it melts Ooh. into the bacon and the burger. Nice. I'm very hungry now. That's that's a good burger. That's a top tier burger. But you, you wouldn't have it every day. It's your fancy burger. It's your Christmas dinner burger. <laughs> <laughs> it's your it's your it's your wedding breakfast burger. That's what it is. That's a festive feast. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but then we meet as as you mentioned. There is actually there's there's two there's two plot points in this movie. There's two bits of plot. Um, one is I set fire to man house and then me run away and then it's me write book me very smart yep everyone love me famous successful me, author <laughs> me famous author um, uh, so what happens is that Tessa finds a giant manuscript for a book uh, that, that Hardin is writing and, the and book that's is literally a- the first time in four films we've ever seen him writing anything <laughs> Exactly. There might have been some like, oh, I'm a poet. Look at me write poetry in the first one when they're in college. Oh, that's maybe? true. I don't yeah, know. he talks a little bit I about writing. Remember. He talks a little bit about writing poetry in the first in the first um, movie, doesn't he? Um, but now he's written this whole book, and what it is is his journal entries from when he was doing his counselling, um, and he's just decided. And his his counsellor has said, oh yeah, you should turn this into a book. That's something that every counsellor would say. That that's exactly what every mental health professional would say to someone. <laughs> um, and what it is is it's basically a book about her and about their relationship. Definitely not something dodgy to do. Yeah, definitely very very normal and definitely okay that he's done. He's going to do that without her consent. That's that's really really like shady, isn't it? How like she's all like she reads it and then she's like, I'm I might not be okay with this. And he's like, Well, you're too late. There's a bidding war for my book. It's going to happen. There's a bidding war. There and, would and not the, be a bidding actual, war for that stupid book. I mean, there would not because the book, when she's reading it out and then you get it in his horrible monotone narration, it sounds totally shit. I and did it's this. extremely I went, misogynistic. I went here and there she was and I, and I loved her, but I wasn't sure about it because I'm, I'm broken. I, I, I loved her, but then she was drunk and drunk women aren't attractive. That's li- basically literally the line of dialogue of, from this book. It's like if Lawrence Fox wrote a book. Yeah. <laughs> is basically what what this what this book is that our boy Harden's written. Yeah. Um and and obviously, you know, writing about someone else's life like this is hugely disrespectful. Um brings up all sorts of ethical problems. Um there's actually some some cases in publishing going on at the moment around people saying you've written about my emotional trauma about yeah. my psychological trauma and you didn't get my permission to write about it what that's come up a few doing? times of late yeah. so in reality as a normal human being here she would have gone no you're not publishing that or i'm going to sue the shit out of you yeah that's what that's what would have happened alternatively she maybe could have turned around and said well right i'm the talented one here i'm going to write a book about an abusive ex-boyfriend called hard on farts <laughs> And then <laughs> that would I'm have been so the, good. I'm going to get the the big book. I'm going to get the big book deal. But of course, actually, once again, one of the few um, one of the few uh, bits of realism in this movie is that a nepotism baby got a really easy book deal. Yeah, which does happen. Which that does happens happen every day. <laughs> which does which does happen every day. So yeah, a publishing publishing contract for a nepotism baby. Yeah, actually, you know what? That is that is true. There wouldn't be a bidding war because it would just be whoever his family was friends with in publishing would just be like, yeah, okay, fine, we'll just, we'll just publish it. Yeah, do it, fine. Um, it wouldn't be like, oh my god, we must get this memoir from some untalented twenty something from some random knob, from some random dickhead who can you imagine like the press tour for this of him like going into a, a McDonald's and being like, oh my God, they don't have the chocolate shakes and then smashing up a window. And then going, and then his, no! <laughs> and then his, his PR manager having to be like, don't worry, don't worry, we'll get you one at the next McDonald's. And I'm going, there are no more McDonald's. This is the one I want for my life. <laughs> this is my one and only McDonald's. And then he writes about it in his journal. Yeah, he writes about it in his next book. The McDonald's Diaries. 
<laughs> um, but we we do get a couple more snapshots of abusive behavior from from him um here when she finds out about the book and she's like right i'm done i'm getting out of here he once again stops her from leaving the apartment her own apartment stands in the doorway once again using physical threat to stop her from leaving him which happens time and time and time again throughout these films but it feels particularly bad in this one doesn't it yeah really bad he does it over and over again when he's at, when is at the she shows up to the party where he's being a hipster bad boy and he she like humiliates him and then he kind of manhandles her out the door that was really not cool and yeah, that kind of thing seemed to happen over and over in this film it does yeah this is a movie that is teaching you know the the i try not to be like oh my god movies ch- by watching this movie it's going to be a be a bad message for people like oh my god children shouldn't watch horror movies or anything like that but actually Children should movies, watch horror movies. M- <laughs> yeah, but 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 movies and books and television and newspapers, they do have an impact on the way that we perceive the world. But it's in a lot more subtle way than I watched RoboCop shoot someone in the balls, and now I'm going to go shoot someone in the balls. It doesn't work like that. What it does work at though is building our internal biases. If it's the way that other things are putting pressure on. And obviously, the way that we think about relationships in society is very male-centric. And there's still a lot of messaging out there, although things have been getting better about the way that actually bad boys are more fun and bad boys are what you want. And when you put that together with the reality of abusive relationships, and then you look at the audience for a film like After Ever Happy, which, by the way, we haven't mentioned, worst fucking name for a movie ever really terrible um, really terrible but 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 when you put all of that together what kind of messaging is this going to give to an audience that's primarily young girls when it comes to their relationships what are they going to recognize which is inappropriate behavior from their boyfriends or from their girlfriends exactly you you look at it and you think oh you know this is this is something that's just a throwaway film and no one's actually watching this but obviously people are watching it because this stuff is getting made and like who is watching this yeah young people who are still learning all this stuff i mean we're all obviously still learning all the time but yeah it's 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 cultural isn't it this is how culture is made and it's bad yeah absolutely Absolutely. This is how culture is made. And what you've got is an audience of people who are maybe going into their first relationships after watching these films, when you're looking at that age bracket. And actually, are they going to recognise signs of abusive behaviour from their partners if they've been watching a movie that's been romanticising exactly the same kind of behaviour? And that's why this movie is actually far more dangerous than letting your kids watch, like, I don't know, Friday the 13th far more dangerous than that because movies like that don't give you the same kind of messaging about reality it's all fantasy you're not going to watch hellraiser and think (laughs) you know what i'm going to go skin someone after i watched lord of the rings i went on this really really long journey to mount doom did i ever tell you about this (laughs) ah i did not know i was eight years old (laughs) (laughs) yeah i i um (laughs) I watched Star Wars and then I wanted to commit acts of terrorism against the government because that's what it taught me to do. When it's something that's got that fantastical element to it, that's not where the danger of media comes from and that's where things like the satanic panic really fall down. Yeah. But in reality, when things are based on something more real and they've got that kind of subtext behind them, that's where the danger comes from the way that media teaches people things, particularly when it's that developmental journey that someone's going on, like the audience for these kind of films, like people who maybe haven't experienced relationships before, like this is going to get someone stuck in an abusive relationship and they're not going to recognise the harm that it's doing or the danger that they're in. Well, not only are they not going to recognise it, they're going to think that it's good as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that it's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, that that's, that's how things are meant to be. And that's the real problem here, is how many people are going to be stuck with uh, uh, a Hardin Scott slash Hardin Vance Hardin and think, Vance. oh, this is, this, this is great. He's treating me exactly like the character from that movie. And if any He's young men see this, this is exactly how not to behave. You can yeah. It's a pretty good guide to your life. Don't be like that. Do the opposite of all of the stuff that he does. Yeah, don't have a Union Jack on your wall. Don't no. wear stupid turtleneck jumpers. <laughs> don't say, um, I don't date. Say, <laughs> don't say I, I date. date. I love it. I date. I date um, all the when, time. 
when your girlfriend wants to go somewhere, don't stop her from going there because you're um, insecure. Just be like, that's cool. Enjoy. Yeah. Respect people. And this is a movie that doesn't teach people respect. No. And also don't publish books that- because books are for nerds. Books are for nerds. And if you do publish books, like the creator of this series, this is based on books, of course, which is where all the problems come from, is that this is based on books. And yeah, as of you course. Know, books are bad. Books are bad. You should never read. You want, <laughs> you want to get to the root cause of what the dangers of the After series ban all books. Yeah. That's what we're saying on this podcast. We knew that was good. We were going to get there sooner or later. <laughs> ban all books. Just, if you, Don't if you want burn to down sure a house, safe, burn down the books. Yeah, go to your local library and just start tearing shit up. You could see that actually there was the counter-narrative in this film already when he was ripping up that copy of The Great Gatsby and you're meant to learn that it's bad. In reality, ripping up copies of The Great Gatsby is good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what, what we should we... all be doing. <laughs> that's what we should all be doing. Your, your homework, dear listeners, find a copy of The Great Gatsby and destroy it in front of someone who loves that book. Yep. Baz Luhrmann. I'm going to go around to Baz Luhrmann's house. (laughs) Go around to Baz Luhrmann's house, do a little Elvis, uh and then rip up a copy of The Great Gatsby. I'm going to go, you ain't nothing but a hound, no. Tearing (laughs) up this book. Tear it up in front of him. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, So anyway, um, he is the least charismatic guy in the world. He can't write. Where would the fans come from to read? Exactly. Book. Like, who do they think would be interested in that book? I'm an arsehole, and I write mean things about women in my book. Yeah. Come and read my book. I mean, is it going to be Jordan Peterson fans? At the end of the movie, oh, it's maybe. not... maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe the book is going to be bought by horrible alt-right chuds. But at the end of the movie, it's all of these, like, 20-something women in the audience who are there to see him read from his book. Yeah, now I think this would actually be one of those incel books, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a, a what, what's his book called? Twelve ways to live. Twelve rules for life. Twelve rules for life. Oh, it's close. And I then more close. rules for life is the the follow up. And then the final Which one. Penguin Random oh, House shit. should be ashamed that they published. Absolutely, the the final book, of course, in the in the the the, um, <laughs> the Jordan Peterson universe <laughs> is going to be. Oh shit! I've been eating only meat for six months, and now I'm dead. <laughs> That's the, that's the last book. I know it's a bit of a mouthful of a, of a yeah. title, but you, you just know. know that. Okay, so this this film ends with a scene of Hardin Scott doing like a reading from his book in a, a, a bookshop in New York, and it's it's boring and terrible. You just know that like the scene that they didn't show was after that he was going back to be on the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> that was his next <laughs> stop on the press tour. You you, you know Joe that actually um, women are bad. Oh. I didn't know that. Can we get a fact check on that? That's really, really, really interesting. I've never that's heard that so, before, said Joe Rogan. That's so interesting. I've got no neck and I'm four foot ten. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about that for three hours. <laughs> Tell me more about how women are bad for <laughs> 12 hours. Let's, let's smoke some weed because we're cool guys. All time. Yeah. Um, fuck Joe Rogan, by the it way. I think that we can say that the that's worst. the official... <laughs> The official, the official policy of this podcast is Joe Rogan is bad. Yeah. And if you listen to him, you should feel bad. Absolutely. Um, um, one thing that does happen, though, that's set up for the final movie, is we get a soy boy beta cuck potential love interest. Oh, yeah. That's right. There's a guy there at the end, and it's like, are they dating? Are they not? It's not really clear. And then at the end, it's like they're, they're having a conversation. Um, and he says, oh, I'm going to my friend's gallery opening tonight. Do you want to come? And she says, can we do it another time? I have to go to this thing. Can we do it another time? A gallery opening is a one-off event. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, sure we can. It's a one-off event, you stupid people. And it just Tell like that perfectly encapsulated how lazy this film is. This was like the last page. It was probably past the deadline. Someone just wrote that offhand, like not even thinking about it. But that that just like was felt like a kick in the teeth. <laughs> But that's what I mean about this movie feeling like it was written by an algorithm, is that somewhere in the cloud, there's something about going to a gallery opening for a first date. And the algorithm yeah. pulled that out. And then they were like, oh, but she can't go. Let's do it another time. Um, alternatively, of course, maybe he called up his friend and was like, put it off. Hold on to the gallery opening. Lose your deposit. The girl that I may be seeing doesn't want to go tonight. Can we do it next week instead? 
Yeah, you need to move your gallery opening to fit me. A guy <laughs> well, who's wearing exactly scrubs, me. and that's how you know that he's okay. Because he works a, he's, in the medical he's, profession. He's, he's a, he's a, he's a um, JD from Scrubs, isn't he? He's like a trainee yeah, doctor. That's, that's the one. Thing. But, um, but yeah, obviously what's going to happen? We all know what's going to happen. He's the soy boy beta cuck who actually is emotionally engaged with her, who's then inevitably going to be cucked by Hardin in the final movie for the final scene of true romance. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be their wedding, isn't it? And Hardin's going to show up and be like, I'm, I'm the one who Oi, really bitch. loves you. I love you, bitch. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't believe I missed your wedding. <laughs> and then he's going to push the guy and go fuck off fuck off this is my woman in that way that he says <laughs> in about fuck just off. about every scene of this film <laughs> <laughs> fucking awful <laughs> fuck off I'm Hardin fuck where's my whiskey bottle I'm Hardin I have a drinking problem <laughs> when it's convenient <laughs> I'm laughing um, because it's true <laughs> That's exactly what this film is like. And we're going to have to watch the last film and that's exactly what it's going to be like. That's all it's going to be. It's going to be her with this other guy for a bit and then Hardin's going to turn up and be a piece of shit and then he's going to go, but I've written a second book and it's about how much I love you. Yeah. And there's five publishers looking at it now. Yeah. Do you want to be part of the sequel to my life? What's it going to be? The, they already kind of covered the like that she can't have children in this weirdly for no reason. It's like supposed to be some big emotional thing. It's like you're 21, you're not thinking about having children. And then and then he's like somehow annoyed about that for no reason. And it's just yeah, it makes Yeah, no it goes it, So it's it, like they kind of already did that. From, so is it going to be like uh, children or pregnancy in the last one? That's got to be in there somewhere, hasn't it? It, it, it it's really weird in this movie it went from him going oh, i don't want kids i don't like kids and then she goes oh i can't have kids and then he goes oh that's shit i wanted kids <laughs> which again is that kind of emotional manipulation yeah. isn't it of him being like he wants whatever he can't have and that's basically his character art throughout these movies is he's a dog looking at a sausage that he can't get <laughs> that that he's, he's a he's a very stupid labrador Looking at a sausage that he Don't can't besmirch the good name of Labradors. He'd be an <laughs> well, ugly no, dog, like a bull terrier. You know, those ones that look like sharks. <laughs> He'd be like one of those. <laughs> I love a sh- I like a shark no, dog. I don't. Um, what? Yeah, okay. He's a... I, I'm trying to think of a bad breed of dog, but all dogs are good, really. Um, but yeah, his, his whole character is... is um, I want whatever I can't get. And if I can't get it, that makes me angry. That that's that's his whole character throughout all of these movies. Um and yeah, that's what's gonna happen in the final film. It's gonna be um you're with this nice guy now. And then it's either gonna turn out that she wants the danger, which would be in keeping with the messaging of this movie, or they'd create some kind of convoluted reason why the this guy's actually a bad yeah. guy. It's 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 gonna be one or yeah, the other. Harden's gonna do something really bad, and that's actually gonna be seen as good within the context of the film. He's going to, like, murder the president. Yeah. But it's all right, because he disrespected my book. Yeah. My shitty, shitty book. That's going to be a book off. He's going to be against other writers. Oh, yeah. Jonathan Franzen's going to insult him at a book tour, and then he's going to push him (laughs) off a bridge. (laughs) He's going to smash his head in with a hardback cover of, (laughs) I don't know, what's a big book? The Bible. Infinite Jest. (laughs) first edition copy of infinite jest just smashing his head open it's full 15 minutes no cuts as we watch jonathan franson's head get demolished by harden while he says fuck i would legitimately watch that Lars triers <laughs> after ever happy to oh, you know that that exists in some um, parallel universe <laughs> i'd watch that give us that pull their hovens after me now you're talking is what i want to see I would I would watch that 100%. Um, but instead, we get a bit of a damp squib ending here because obviously it's all meant to set up the final awful film. Yeah, in it ends awful, very awful abruptly. Sequence. And I thought that it was it was the last one. So when it ended there, I was like, oh, geez, really? That made me want to go, fuck. Made, made you want to go out into the garden and go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Except I didn't because I respect my um, neighbours. 
<laughs> Unlike Hard and Scott, who respects nobody, yeah. especially himself. Yeah, that's the um, thing. He's got no self-respect, <laughs> has he? If he did, he'd he, be a real man. He's he's a little he's a little loser. We hate you, Hard and Scott. If you if I was able to, you know, if you had like the golden ticket from um, Last Action Movie, not from Willy Wonka. If you, if, no, have you have you seen Last Action Movie, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Last film? Action Hero? Last Action Hero, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> See, what's yeah. Last Action Movie? Is that like not another team movie, but for action films? That's a film that should exist. <laughs> that's exactly. That, that should exist. That would be great. <laughs> yes, I've seen that film. Like but, a sort of Hot Shots part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but not for yeah. probably 20 years. So I can't remember what happened to I've it. I've also not seen it in a long time. There's a golden as ticket. As you can probably tell by the fact. Yeah, I've not seen it in a long time, as you can tell from the fact that I got the name wrong. But yeah, that the whole point of the movie is that there's a golden cinema ticket, and that's what the kid uses to get into the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie right. and them to get out into the real world. So if I had that, I would go into After Ever Happy, and I would slit his throat. <laughs> I, I, would, I would murder him in front of his father and say, this is your his real His real dad, not his fake dad. His real dad. And then I would bring his severed head to his girlfriend and say, it's done. That's what I do. You can be with this This nice doctor man now. You're welcome. You can be with the nice doctor man now. I've murdered the worst person in this universe. And then we take all the copies of his book and burn them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Giant bonfire in Times Square of all the copies of Hardin Scott's book. book after yeah which again no one would call a first book after because think about the seo around that well that's obviously obviously wasn't an issue for the author of this book though was it because it was a it was an online book you know what these online books absolutely they have now. yeah <laughs> the online books but you think about how complicated things have got in the x number of years since since online publishing became a big thing and this was one of the movie one of the one of the series that came up with it you'd never be able to get away with calling a book something as simple as after no for a first time author these no days. way it would be called like after colon i'm massive twat <laughs> it'd be the the twat chronicles of hardin scott no exactly well, what they, it would be. they'd they'd use the course. they'd use the name of the character in the title which which a lot of books do and which i hate It'd yeah be yeah the, the seven yeah. trials of hardin scott or something the yeah the 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 seven trials of punchy mcface yeah <laughs> what do you what do you think his character names would be it would be like um her name's tessa and this is like the least creative man in the world so her name would be jess yeah in the book, wouldn't it? That's about as far as it would yeah. get. Bardin. Jessa and Bardin. Bardin. Yeah. <laughs> Jessa and Bardin. Chardin. Um, yeah, that... <laughs> Chardin stopped. What, what I find interesting is that these movies, they really try and use a lot of the tropes of similar kind of romantic love triangles. But we've only had a love triangle, really, in the second film. Yeah. Where in the first one you had the cuck boyfriend from back home, but he didn't really play a part in the no, movie. No, and he was a dick as well. And he was also an abusive, well, n- not abusive in the same way, but like a controlling dick. Um, then in the second one you did have the the love triangle with our boy, but then the second, the third movie and the fourth movie didn't have that at no. all. We had this little bit at the end, but it's like, okay, well, where is this friction for this relationship? It's just an awful human being. And someone who he's constantly abusing who keeps taking him back. Exactly. The the jeopardy is how awful is he going to be today? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which isn't really a very strong uh, direction for a film to take, is it? Let's be honest. No, it's not really compelling. No. I was not on the edge of my seat. I was on the edge of my seat ready to throw up at every moment. I was on the edge of my seat ready to run out into the garden and go, No! <laughs> That sounded like Pierce Brosnan. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Your I'm impression of him is Scott. so good. Fuck's sake, where's my whiskey? I, mean, I don't oh. mind swearing, but the, the amount of times he said fuck in this film was just ridiculous. It's, yeah, it's truly awful. I mean, it, it, we have we swear sometimes in this podcast. Maybe a little bit too much sometimes. We've been told this is that. A podcast for, we're a podcast for adults. Yeah. That's what we do. It's got, it's got a content warning on it. <laughs> 
But yeah, I mean, we've obviously sworn a lot more in this podcast, but we probably said less f bombs than the after movie. Yeah, we have. We're, we're just quoting the film. That's the thing. We're just quoting. That's what this we're terrible doing. Yeah, film. we're quoting. We're quoting this terrible. In which a guy says um, "fuck loads" and like, what is that supposed to achieve? What is that supposed to do? Like, it. Or what? What purpose does it serve other than making us think that like what he's like a really emotionally expressive guy? No, it just makes him look like a dick. He's. He's truly awful. One thing that I really find interesting about these these movies as well is that they've all got these sort of really sweet posters. Like, if you look at the art for the films, it's always like the two of them looking lovingly into each other's eyes. And it's like... All the um, same. No. <laughs> Which never happens in the films. Does it? Like no. when, when, when you When you think about... When you think about the... Um, when you think about the movies, they never have that kind of loving look in each other's eyes. It's always like a really randy bit of sex and then shouting at each other and crying. Yeah, and him there's just no, looking, no t- at, looking at her with his angry face. There's no tenderness. There's no... And in fact, there's no... Um, there's no, like, connection between these people. You don't get any tension between them. No. It's just he's an awful human being and for some reason she wants to be with him for some reason that nobody can fathom yeah it's it's truly truly awful um is there anything else you'd like to say about after we fell by the way no um (laughs) so uh we did get um recasting of christian vance in this film yep that's a little bit of trivia for you um selma blair got replaced yep Um, she finally decided she'd had enough Um, and Mira Savino came in, who's another person who's far too good <laughs> to be in this series of films. Who is she? Um, so Mira Savino has been in all sorts over the years. Um, you might recognise her from Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. Not seen that. Remember that? Oh, it's very good. Very good. Um, she's She's been in all sorts, um, particularly prominent in the 90s through to the early 2000s. Um, and yeah, again, far too good a career to be in a a film like this let's be honest um but uh but yeah um that's kind of the main the main trivia the other trivia is that this movie has the highest fuck count for any film of any time that's a lie but it feels that way doesn't it yeah no because scarface is the famous one isn't it yes yeah he says it 182 times that's where blink 182 got their name from is it really it is yeah oh wow that's brilliant I did not know that. That's really great. Um, and I think they just said Blink because they couldn't call their band Fuck 182 in the late <laughs> 90s when they were forming. <laughs> Could probably get away with that now. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. I've got a little bit of something here. I don't know how real this is. Um, two scenes from the book never appeared in the film. Apparently, Steph showed her true colours. I don't know who Steph is. Who's Steph? She I'm never so really liked Tessa, and she did not want Hardin to date her, so she had another friend slip her drugs in the drink. I don't know who Steph is. Let's be honest. I don't know. Um, maybe she wasn't even in it. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe they cut this character entirely. And there was another one, which is Hardin tells Tessa about his time in England with a girl who he was having relations with. Um, eventually, her parents saw a video they made and weren't happy about it. So after they break up, he went to England and met the mum again. Okay, right. that, that adds a lot of context. I suppose it's another example of him doing something awful. So fair enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so apparently there was there was there could have been more convoluted bullshit in this movie that we we didn't get. Oh, good. So at least we can be grateful for that. <laughs> it could have been two hours long instead of one and a half hours long. Um, well, that's something to be we... thankful for. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> happy, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> and then we've got after everything coming next. Is that the one? I'm kind of tempted. Is that what it's called? Yeah. That's somehow even we've worse. Got... But what's interesting is I don't think there is a book of that. Oh, really? Because he did it. It goes the after series of books goes after after we collided, after we fell, after ever happy, and then before, which is the prequel. Ah, so, so have is, they has, done the Twilight thing of splitting this into two books? So have they? 
Have they split this into two? Just because that's what you do? To squeeze out more yeah. money from this rancid citrus fruit. <laughs> is that what's is that what's happened? I think they've done it. They've they've done a mocking jay. They a breaking dawn. They have, they have done a mocking jay. Oh my god. Because um, Breaking Dawn was the first one to do that, wasn't it? That was before Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, if I remember rightly. I might be wrong on that. Yeah, I think you might be right. I'm not entirely sure. Um But uh yeah, it's oh god, I can't believe we've got to watch another one of these, let's be honest. But not for another year or so. Yeah, it'll probably be next year, won't it? Yeah, they seem to be able to churn these out, don't they? Yeah. How are we going to rank this, then? I don't think it deserves to have a special scale. Are we giving it a zero? You said it was the worst film we've ever covered. Yeah. Can we give it a one? Is it how many How many times you go out and shout in the garden? Yeah, I guess. One time. But it's a really long one. No. One. I'm not going out to shout in the garden. You're, you're staying in. Above that. I'm giving it a zero. Literally giving it a zero. It doesn't deserve a score. But if the next one's worse, then where do we go from there? Well, you've given this one a one. Can you give it a minus? So we can both go. Okay. We can both go zero. Okay, we'll, we'll save that for next time as a treat. <laughs> it's a little treat to ourselves for putting ourselves through it. This is genuinely the worst movie we've watched for this podcast. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, absolutely, absolutely awful. Just Friends perhaps did have a redeeming feature or two in it somewhere. I mean, I mean that was an awful movie, but at least it was it felt like a film. I don't want to revisit like it to find out. It. No, no, but it at least had the structure of a movie around it. Whereas this even doesn't have a structure. Um this is this has ruined my year, Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You jingle you've bells, jingle bells. <laughs> you've destroyed my life with these films. Um so we do have something next. Yes, it's now December. We're now watching Christmas films. We can put this whole mess behind us. We're going to watch, what's it called? The Lindsay Lohan one? I'll never um, remember. Lohan for Christmas. Lohan for Christmas. I don't need to remember because I open <laughs> Netflix. It's right there in front of me every time. What's it What's it called then? Or have you not got it open? Oh, no, I didn't mean I was actually going to do that. Oh, <laughs> hold on. Uh, Falling for Christmas. Falling for Christmas. That's the one. I'm excited to watch some festive nonsense. I'm feeling very festive. I made some mince pies already. It's all all happening here. Very nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, we've not got decorations up here yet, but soon, soon it's going to happen. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you didn't watch After Ever Happy, but if you did, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. Don't watch it if you've not watched it yet. Yeah. Don't watch it. It's bad. Um, there's a link in our show notes where you can give us money. It's like a virtual tip jar. You can find us on Twitter at Big Boys Don't Pod. You can email us Big Boys Don't Cry Podcast at gmail.com. Um, and we will be back next week to talk about Falling for Christmas. Alrighty. Bye bye.